Okay, hi everyone, and it's my next episode of podcast, but also here on YouTube video, I have this beautiful interview with Sharon Brown. And I'm so glad to hear to have her here, but also just wanted to mention a little bit how I met Sharon. So I met her in a beautiful online world, <laughs> in the sea of a lot of different people. And we collaborated on a few different projects, um, mainly through the magazine and the collaborative uh, book. And Sharon's gonna talk about that uh, for sure. So this interview is about, you know, how to keep balance in the busy work and life and how to keep healthy, but also uh, what is out there in terms of the career exploration in midlife uh, and just really enjoying this time of our life. So I'm very pleased to um, uh, here to have Sharon on board. So Sharon, can you tell us a few words about yourself, what you do, and how you got to the to where you are at the moment, how you got into the publishing, especially the side of things? Well, firstly, thank you so much, Monica, for the invitation. It's always lovely to speak with you. So thank you for that. So, yeah, I do quite a few things, as you know, Monica. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I do juggle quite a lot of balls, but the main one for me really is the publishing side of things. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch very lightly on the other things, but I'll yes. mainly concentrate on the publishing. So I run the Book Chief Publishing House, um, which I founded, I think it was October 2021. Yeah. So we've been going very, very strongly for the past 18 months, you know, we've published over 120 authors, some collaborative, some solo, and we've got a really, really busy schedule with our own books because we do commission our own books as well, just to get people involved, to get them to become authors, to get them to communicate, to collaborate with each other. And they're usually always really, really fun projects to do as well. So that's the main essence yeah. of my main business. So we also... I also, I say we because there is a team of us as well. I also founded Motivate Magazine in 2020, which has now changed and evolved into Motivate Media, which is a business and information hub. So it's almost like a blogging site. So you submit an article. If mm. it's good enough, we'll publish it. We also publish press releases and we do various books around that project as well, amongst a whole wealth of other kind of ideas that come and kind of lastly, the Speakers Index, which is a public speaking directory and magazine, and that's kind of there to get you seen. And it fits really well in with the other two areas of business that I concentrate on as well, because I do feel speakers usually always should have a book. Um, authors should probably speak about what they're writing about. <laughs> And it's a great start to actually do it from an article base as well. So you're getting some kind of attention there and exposure before you do everything else. So that's kind of the reasons behind why I kind of started those three particular projects, because mm -hmm. I just feel they're a really good fit for a small business owner. It's the, it's the areas that build up the most credibility as well. So the publishing is definitely my main area because probably just because we're so busy at the moment as well. So I have to put an awful lot of effort and time behind the publishing side of things. But I absolutely love it, Monica. It's 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 great. And I think it shows. <laughs> absolutely. And I just love the especially the collaborative part. And I think you're right that if you have a story you want to talk about, you can also write about it, right? So I think it's it, it's a wonderful way of you know really putting all of that together. And um, and I think you have loads of people from different parts of the world, right? Yeah, yeah they're, they're like, all over the place. <laughs> Where did they come from? But then I, I don't also... know. <laughs> because I, I know some other publishing places and there's, but I feel like your platform gives everyone a chance, right? I feel like if you want it, if you want to put that commitment, um, you know, that, yeah, that's why I think people come and and, and, and they are yeah. happy to collaborate, yes. I think so as well. And, you know, as you know, if I'm allowed to mention our latest collaboration, which I do mm. believe you're in, Monica, yeah. <laughs> which is The Secrets of Successful Women book. 
And it's not just about business because I feel that women, especially, you know, at a particular time in your life as well, you feel you've got more, you've got enough experience to understand that you've got success in a mm. lot of other areas, not just business. You know, you could be successful at motherhood, which I'm sure is a challenge for everybody. I've got two fur babies. That's as far as motherhood goes for me. <laughs> Am I excess, a success at it? I don't know. I could strangle them some days. but <laughs> um, So there's, there's loads of different areas. You know, somebody could have lost a lot of weight or, you know, you could be great at relationships or communication or whatever it might be. And I think that book, the amount of kind of value that's mm. going to go into that one book because there is 99 or 100 women I'm not totally sure yet. Uh, it just depends how many people do submit their stories, really, because obviously some sign up and then they don't. So mm. the amount of people that submit their stories, well, it's just a vast array of topics, which I think there's going to be so much value for every woman to just read, because I'm sure we, all of us can relate to at least one, two or three or more stories that's going to be in that book. Yeah, and, and definitely I'm so glad I'm collaborating on that because I'm also, you know, want to see and hear those stories around how we interpret the success for ourselves because it doesn't have to be, you know, a very successful business, as you say, or a lot of money. Because when I came into the business, I said, like, what I, what, what success means for me when I feel that I am successful? And I think at this stage in my business, I feel like I have my success is I have not given up, right? Mm -hmm. That my success that I keep going and helping those people who want to be helped. Of course, I've also understood that you can't, you know, like people have to come to you as well, just to, with that willingness to 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 ask um, for help, which sometimes it is a, a block for some people. But generally, I think like I'm here, I, I have not given up. Um, I truly believe in what I offer and the value. And I think from, for your side, it's the same, right? It's like you offer the value to the people because they they want to be heard, right? And through the collaboration, they, they get some other skills as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, when I started out in 2018 on in the online space, mm. the main, and I started out with Revival Sanctuary, which was my very first platform, which is still going, although it has reduced down to a certain level now um, that everybody's really happy with. So, you know, that was the main aim for me is to get people to collaborate because, you know, I worked a lot of years, 30 years in the corporate world. I yeah. saw a lot of competition um, between women, between people, and I really didn't like it. And I thought when I started Revival Sanctuary, the main tagline for me was collaboration over competition. And I still do that across all of my platforms. I just think people will get so much further, so much quicker if they just mm -hmm. choose to open up and collaborate not just with anybody, but with people to build those relationships yeah, and with people that they can actually trust because we can't trust everybody, obviously. But, yeah. you know, the, there is, um, I think the more people you meet, the more people you connect with, the better chance you've got of meeting somebody who's in line with your values and everything that you kind of stand for to work with. So that's another reason why I've done this big book, which is 100 Women. This is the biggest a book that exactly. I've actually done in terms of how many people exactly you know, it's, a, it's completely hats off ladies. to your project management skills right well, so I am a qualified project manager so. I know it's like she must have <laughs> she, so I read your bio and I'm gonna show everyone uh, the book uh, we've collaborated on it but it's just you know yeah it just shows that you you just have to have those skills right you have to have those skills and you have to have a process um, yes. because it can go I mean I've I've done some books in the past when I haven't been as experienced as I am now doing these collaborative books you know mm. maybe the first second or third book and you know it's quite hard to manage so a lot of people have said to me are you mad taking on this project with 100 <laughs> women and I'm like yeah probably but that's why the, there's kind of clear guidelines there's clear yeah. boundaries and stuff like that so you know so far so good Monica it's all going really well everybody's been fabulous um so fingers crossed but fingers crossed but yeah I've really I've really enjoyed it today anyway it's just been it's been really good getting to know new people 
Yeah, absolutely. So you've been busy for the last 18 months. So how do you keep that work and life balance? How, you know, the health at this stage is really, really key and important, but one of element, but what about other things? Oh yeah, I mean, if I've worked, uh, the way that I say it is I've worked quite a few years. I've been in business now for eight mm. years. I've worked quite a few years at the start to allow me to get to this point. Yeah. Um, and this point is, yeah, I do work hard. I do have deadlines to meet. I ensure that I do do them. It, sometimes it runs away with me, don't get me wrong. I'm not superwoman, and sometimes it does. But if it does, it does. I don't beat myself up about it. You know, I'll explain to the people um, that I'm taking a couple of days off, like I just have done this week. Exactly. And, and, you know, and I just stick to that and I make sure that I stick to that. So this week, you know, I haven't answered anything really on social media. I think I went on last night just to say thank you for some birthday wishes. But that was it. Um, and those two days were paramount for me to do nothing. And I do do that every now and again. So next week I will be going away. I'm going to spend time with my family. I'll mm. still be on my phone, but I won't be on my laptop. So I'll still do what I need to do. Yeah. But I'll still take that time because I do feel, I, I definitely do feel that family and life and your own health and self-care should absolutely come first. That's just, that's my area of, of success. And that's how I do that. And that's what I'll be writing about within mm. that book. Because success to me isn't how much money you've got in the bank. It's flexibility. It's freedom to do what you feel is important in your life absolutely because i just i totally agree it's about the strong boundaries but also understanding like you know uh, i can have all the money in the world but i'm not really happy and i'm not really healthy because in the process i've lost all of that mm -hmm. and and i think it's so important and um yeah i think your the the boundaries are so so important but i I know how it is in a in a business. Like you get something from the client, and I don't know, eight o'clock in the evening, and you're tempted to <laughs> to look at that and respond and all of that. It depends what it is, but I try to say, well, yeah, I try to honor the time I have for myself. Um, and I think that's really important, Monica, yeah. as well. And you're right; it is very, very tempting, you know, because I I work with hundreds of people. It's you know. I've got one of those businesses or, you know, a few of those businesses where it's not just one, two or up to 10 clients. It's literally yeah. hundreds of people. Yes. So I have to be really careful in a lot of different ways. Um, self-care has to absolutely come first. And that means mental self-care as well. Mm -hmm. So if people cross lines that they shouldn't or they cross boundaries, I, I have to ensure that I manage that in a way that um, is good for me. Basically, mm. that, that's the bottom line. I have to manage it in a way that's good for me and fits with my work-life balance and my own mental health. And I think everybody should try and kind of do that, really. Yes, yeah. And I think sometimes we don't realise it until we get to the point that it's like it's just not fun anymore. And um, so going back to our one of our projects is this Small Business Owners Handbook, right? Yes, so love that book. Yeah, it's so good and very, I love the collaboration, all the presentations, high quality speakers, like everyone really put effort into it. And you've written quite a few chapters in the book. And yes. one, I do like two of them is the how to deal with bad behavior in business. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> plenty of that, right? Oh, and we how, get plenty of that. Yeah, and how 50 plus women are the new superpower. I absolutely love that. So anyone, it's still on Amazon, right? Available. Oh, yeah, that's that's on Amazon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I'll put the link into the show notes about it because I loved it and I resonated with a lot of these things, um, how your perception of some of the things has changed, how your boundaries becoming stronger because you've learned so much over the years uh, and that you are confident and that you really realize your own value and the health. And also you said about that, um, you realize that time with your parents is limited and they will never be replaced. And I think this is such an important um, topic as well. And um, which I personally went through last year, but it's, um, 
yeah it's just to realize all of these things how 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 they are important to you and that's that's what comes with experience you know and yeah. because I've been in business so long and because I worked in the corporate world for so long I did learn a lot and a lot of it has been quite hurtful you know and a lot of these lessons that we learn they are sent to challenge you but I do believe that Mm. Um, I, I honestly do believe that I feel that when these challenges come because I think it's like everything in life you get a good run for maybe a couple of years and you're yeah. flying high and then all of a sudden something comes to throw you off track Yeah. and I think these are things that you know whether the universe has decided you're getting too big for your boots or, or whether <laughs> you know it's just something some kind of obstacle that sh that's thrown at you it could be anything and it could be a money, you know, it could be a financial issue. It could be people who are, you know, being challenging. It could be a lot of different things. And I've experienced pretty much all of them. So mm. now I'm very, very clear in my decision making and how to deal with those things because I've had to get through it on a yeah. number of occasions. Um, so, yeah, it's it's always challenging, but I think there's always light at the end of the tunnel definitely light at the end of the tunnel and it's what we learn and it is a lesson everything's a lesson yeah everything is a lesson for sure and and I think in, in, in one of the chapters you said like on about business behavior, you don't have to put up with it right as well no. well you don't that's the whole point we're self-employed you know we choose who <laughs> we work with we yes. choose what we put up with when you're working for somebody else you know and I've had this situation as well where you know people people are just you know challenging very very challenging when you're in the corporate world but you have to bite your lip to a certain degree because oh, yeah. you're working for somebody else's business but when you're self-employed why should you have to do that why should you have to work with people you don't choose to work with you don't you don't <laughs> and that's the whole point and that's the beauty of um self-employment and I wouldn't change it for the world you know and I'd like to think that the majority of my clients um, are, are lovely people. And, and I have to say the majority of them are. I have had mm -hmm. to remove one this week, but that's um, something that I wouldn't discuss. But it's, yeah. you know, sometimes it, it can get difficult, but you make that choice. You just make that choice for yourself and for your own mental health and for your own kind of um, stability in your own business. So. It's, there's mm. always hard decisions to make, Monica, but I think a lot of them have to be faced head on. Yes, yeah. And I think it's very important to realise that. And I think it's sometimes um, there is a lot of kind of suffering to a certain point that you, you think that you have to put up with it. But actually, I've realised that I cannot coach some of the clients. Like, they come and they are not coachable. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a struggle for them and it's a struggle mm -hmm. for me. And it's just being like, why I should be doing this in my own business, right? Yeah, so, and you have to face those difficult conversations, don't oh you? Oh, my and goodness. I, and that's never easy. Never easy, never easy. And I thought that I've done so much of that in the corporate. But when you do your own business and you you are so invested in it personally, yeah, quite often you have to keep the boundaries. But still, it's a it's a, a kind of you know personal uh, engagement. A lot of the times, um, those difficult conversations are there, and they are one of the most difficult I've ever had. I can imagine, and I think it's probably being a coach as well because as you are kind of one to one. I imagine that would be really difficult. I think probably, I guess, in my businesses because, well, apart from the publishing, that is always difficult. Um, I've had, as I said, I work with hundreds and hundreds of people at the one time because people sign up and everything else. But yes, and you cannot expect all of them to fit into. I guess I don't expect all of them to fit into my mold of principles and values and everything mm. else. So mm. there is definitely going to be some clash at some point. It's inevitable. Mm. And the more people you work with, then the more chance you're going to have a, having yes. that situation. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, we just need to face it head on. And, and, and the funny thing is, after you do it, you feel a huge sense of relief. Yes. After you do it, and maybe that client is gone, you just think, well, well that and I think that relief that you feel tells you that you've made the right decision. Exactly, yeah. 
yeah it's never easy it's not like i had frequent situation with that and yes you're right in any one-on-one situation is different that dynamics a little bit different when you have a, a massive group uh, it's different as well but i think it's just something that uh, really is also good for our mental health right yes definitely we have to protect that mm-hmm. at all costs and it's taken me a long time to realize that you know i used to uh, put up with quite a lot now I don't put up with anything, <laughs> you know. If you if if you're less, I can see you on your post. Like <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> if I'm less, if somebody's less than respectful, that's not a person I want to work with. No, you know that's not how I treat other people, and I don't expect people to treat me like that. And when they go down mm. that road, then I kind of draw the line. I have to draw the line because <laughs> I know it's only going to get worse. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so we know that. So I think that. So anyway, that's in the sh- in a chapter on about you know uh some of it but i guess it's from your corporate experience as well in here yes. and i think it can resonate with uh, quite a lot of people because i think at some point we all <laughs> had those um experiences unfortunately um but it's a, such a great way to actually um you know have have an idea how i could deal with it um so really good that and so what do you enjoy most about working as a publisher Oh, um, good question. <laughs> so I love publishing in the sense that I love seeing, because a lot of the clients that I speak to, a book is just in their imagination. They don't feel that it's something that can be tangible. They don't feel it's something oh, yeah. that, that can actually happen. Um, Because, I mean, Amazon itself is a bit of a minefield. Yes, people can self-publish on Amazon if they choose to learn all the ins and outs. And there is a minefield there because it can be quite temperamental and everything else. But when somebody comes through us and they've got an idea or, and I've actually spoke to a few clients this week who are in that position, they've had a book in them for about four or five years, but they just haven't really pushed it forward until now. And now they're kind of like, right, I want to do this. So seeing that transition from them writing, being really motivated to getting their book done and then, you know, us receiving it and doing everything we need to do it until it's published and then them holding that in their hand, that is very, very rewarding as a publisher Mm -hmm. to watch that transition and to see how happy they are when that happens. And that in itself is just so rewarding. But actually, aside from that, I really like doing the work. So we've got a team on the book chief. We've got an editor. We've got ladies that do the layout. We've got somebody that does the... um, So we've got Laura that does editing. We've got Nicola and Elke who do the layouts now. We've got Danny who does all the design work. And we've got Abby who, if you want PR, she's brilliant. Um, so she works with us on the PR side of things as well and we're hoping to expand that team this year so there is a process to go through but we try and make it as easy as possible to understand for the client and I think that's also really rewarding because you know you do get asked a lot of questions and it's understandable you know if somebody's got a book they want to know what's happening I was the same when I published my first a collaborative book through different publishers I was asking a million questions I needed to know so yeah it's just I think the whole process for me I've just got a real passion for it and just really enjoy seeing the results and seeing people transition make that transition no it's fascinating I think to see how it comes from like a an idea in someone's head and then you have it on the paper and uh, and go through the whole process and it's like really celebrating because I think it's it's um, I think it's it's fascinating. Also, the kind of the question: Can anyone write a book? Absolutely, everybody has got <laughs> everybody has got something in them, and everybody has a, had experiences. So it could be any kind of book. If you're a business owner, you could do a business book about what your business is teaching other people. If you know, a lot of people do books for different reasons. Some people do it to leave a legacy, you know, mm. and it's just for them. We've had a few clients like that. They just want to write a book. They want to pass it to their kids. You know, they want something in print. We've had other people who want to do business books um, that's going to align with their business, get them more business and speaking gigs. You know, some people 
want to make money out of a book. It's very hard to make money out of a book, I will say. Normally, the normal book, a normal book, usually sells between 300 to 1,000 copies during the course of its lifetime. Mm. Unless you keep pushing it, and I think this is a mistake a lot of people make. They write a book, they've got all the hype for the first kind of few weeks, Mm. and then the book goes in the shelf and they don't promote it. Mm. And, you know, that's the mistake... And, and we're all guilty of it. I mean, I'm guilty of it as well. We, we're on to our 13th collaborative book now, and I, I don't promote all of them, although a lot of them are on the website and mm. stuff. But, you know, I think when you've got something like that, treat it as a part of your business. Business, yeah. Treat it as if you're promoting your business, promote your book, mm. because that is part of your business, if, if you know, if that's what you're doing. So, yeah, it's... it's um. I think everybody and anybody could write a book, whether it be a children's book, up to a business book, up to a memoir, whatever it might be. Yeah. And I think it's good to have that kind of guidance where, where to start, because as you said, you know, people do self-publish and whatever, and but it's just having that guidance, I, I would feel comfortable with, you know, going for all, yes, you may have a lot of questions, but then, you know, somebody can guide you through the process. Absolutely, you know, and the easiest way, and I will give this little little snippet of value, the easiest way to write a book if you're unsure, if you're unsure of what to write about, and believe it or not, a lot of people are, because we've all got that much information in our heads, we think, well, what can we write? You know, what should we write about? What topic? So I always say write between three and five different areas that you feel you can speak about or that you've got value and a knowledge in mm. once you write down those three or five areas what is the top one that gives you butterflies what one are you most passionate about and there'll always be one or two yeah. but there'll be one definitive one that you think that's I really like speaking about that choose that and then write down between 10 and 15 bullet points underneath that heading of various different areas within that topic that you can potentially write about. And that can be your chapter headings, those bullet mm-hmm. points, and then just work through it. Yeah. A normal size book is about 30,000 to 40,000 words. Mm. So if you base your book, let's say 35,000 words you want to write, and then you can work back and divide those word count amongst how long you want to be doing this before your book's published. So if you want to be writing for three, if you want your book to be written in three months, divide it into your 30,000 words or whatever it might be, yeah. and then try and commit to writing that. Mm. So, you know, it, is, it does make it an easier process, but yeah. it's always write, try and write about something you're passionate about, because I think otherwise you're not really going to have that momentum and push to, to keep going. Yeah, definitely, because then you got like, oh, I've like, you know, <laughs> stop in the middle, like, oh, there is nothing else, or is, I'm not really feeling that that kind of passion for it anymore. So I guess yes, this is something that then. But from what you're saying, it's not overly complicated to start, right? It's not. It's not complicated. If if I mean, I've really simplified it. Depends how analytical you are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, if if that's just a basic idea to get you started on a book and then when you split it down into each chapter it makes it so much easier and then we obviously if if anybody comes on board with us we try and give them as much guidance as we can through that process yes um but yeah I mean we've got some really really great authors kind of on the books already and I'm sure we'll have many many more this year as well maybe even you Monica who knows yes (laughs) it's on my it's it's my bad yeah I've started last year but because of different things yeah. it's like I couldn't really continue and I just really want to want to do it but as you say it's like um I have so many different topics yeah and putting them like is there that one I want to really write and I think I now got it right so it took me a while to get it but now as you say I'm going to use that process and can I actually find those tender bullet points in all of this yeah. just to to write, uh, uh, you know, about it? So 
that feels really good. So come on, people, publish your book. <laughs> <laughs> Through us. <laughs> yes, with Sharon, we're going to leave, uh, I'm going to leave the obviously links to where you can connect with Sharon. But Sharon, do you want to say where people can find you? Yeah, so the book chief, it's the bookchief.com website. And by email, it is Sharon at the bookchief.com. And all the information is on the website if you want to have a look. If you've got any questions, we've got a contact form on there as well. So that's the main bit that you can contact me on in the easiest way, probably. And I'm on social, obviously, as well. Yes. Yeah, brilliant. So I'll leave that, all of that in the show notes. Thank you very much. Any final word for just to finish this off? Just to reiterate what you said, everybody has a book in them. So do think about it and do consider it. And if you want somebody to pull the ideas out of you, then just get in touch. Yes, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Monica.